Papa, what are you looking at? Air resistance has a significant impact on the motion of the beach ball, so the time it takes for the beach ball to go up and come down may not be the same. I wonder which way is faster. Of course, it takes a longer time to come down. Don't anyhow guess, yeah. I want you to think through it carefully. I'm using this software called Tracker to help me analyze the motion of the two balls. All I have to do is to mark the positions of the balls at every three video frames, and the software is able to plot for me the displacement time graph and the velocity time graph. Let's first look at the graphs for the tennis ball. The displacement time graph for the tennis ball looks like a symmetrical quadratic curve. This is the point where the tennis ball reaches its maximum height, and you can see that it takes the tennis ball about 0.75 seconds to rise to the top, and it takes another 0.75 seconds for it to drop back down. So the time for the tennis ball to go up and down is the same. If you look at the velocity time graph of the tennis ball, it looks like a straight line. So this tells us that the effect of air resistance on the motion of the tennis ball is negligible. The tennis ball was basically free falling. This is not surprising since the tennis ball is quite compact and quite dense, so the air resistance it encounters is probably small compared to its weight. Note also that the speed at which the tennis ball left our hand is the same as the speed at which it returns to our hand. This is of course not surprising, because if air resistance is negligible, then by the principle of conservation of energy, the Ke of the ball at which it left our hand should be the same as the Ke of the ball when it returns to our hand. Now let's look at the graphs for the beach ball. Aha! The displacement time graph for the beach ball is clearly not symmetrical. This is the point where it reaches the maximum height. And you see that it takes about 0.7 seconds for the beach ball to rise to the top, but it takes about 0.8 seconds for it to fall back down. If you look at the velocity time graph, you can see quite clearly that it's no longer a straight line; it's a curve. Clearly, air resistance has a significant impact on the motion of the beach ball. This is not surprising because the beach ball is quite light, and yes, it has quite a big cross-sectional area. So the air resistance it encounters is probably not negligible compared to its weight. So how do we explain why it takes a longer time for it to fall back down? Well, look at the speed of the ball. The speed at which it left our hand was about five meter per second, but the speed at which it returned to the same height later is less than four meter per second. Obviously, this is due to work done against air resistance. In fact, throughout the motion of the ball. K was continuously converted into work done against air resistance, which should never be returned back as K E when the ball was on the way down. So, if compare the speed of the ball at the same height, then the speed of the ball on the way up is always faster than the speed of the ball on the way down. Since this is true at every height position, it is clear why the ball always takes a longer time to come back down. Papa, there's no need for all these analysis. I knew the answer right away. Nonsense! It can't be that obvious. Balloons—they take forever to come down. Every child knows that. 